as you can see, this is the list of categories of form templates from PowerSchool. Each of the categories has multiple forms. You can download all of these from the subscription manager if you have not already received them. Um, they, several of them are very nice and you can modify any of the forms that you find in there, you can modify them. I'm also, I'm gonna show you how to create a new form from scratch. Um, it's actually pretty simple and self-explanatory, but I'm gonna go over just a little bit with you some of the highlights of those things. So when I go into eCollect, I'm going to create a new form. Um, you have two options. You can do a new blank form or you can do an import. So first we're gonna look at a new blank form. You have the collaborative student and it shows you shows all viewers the most recent response. Uh, so it's really good for registrations. So parking registrations, just um, student registration, emergency contacts, different things like that. Um, that is typically what most of your forms will probably be. There are a few that you will have as something else, but this is typically what a lot of your forms are because you want to keep your responses. You want them to, um, you want them to be there. It's not like you're just doing um, a little thing, um, survey or anything, which that is a different category. So let's keep looking. Next, we have the individual response for a student. So this is only showing the last response. So this is good for different evaluations. Then you have the individual response for the teacher, and that's gonna show only the last response. Um, and again, that is good for um, teacher evaluations. Then you have the collaborative teacher, which it shows um, all of the most recent responses. Then you have the general survey, which um, is exactly what it says. It's a survey. Um, there are no prior responses populated. It's good for field trip forms as well. And then you can also import. Um, importing isn't as common as probably what it used to be when it was under Excel School um, because you worked with a particular person and they a lot of times could modify them and then send them back to you and then you'd have to import them. So it's not quite as common um, to use anymore, especially after once you kind of get started and going, it's not something that you'll use very often. Let's talk about um, creating a new form. So I'm gonna do a collaborative student form. Uh, this is something, like I said, that you will use quite a bit of for most of your forms because you're gonna have data going back into PowerSchool. Uh, you want multiple responses, different things like that. So as you can see, I've clicked on collaborative student form. The title, uh, we're in edit mode. We're gonna create the title and set up the main parts of the form. So as you can see, the green is highlighted there under edit mode and titled. So now I'm going to go down through the side columns and just highlight a little bit of each of those. So we're gonna give it a title. Um, you know, whatever your form is called, registration, um, athletics, uh, athletic form, whatever. You can title it however you want the parents to see it or whoever your audience is seeing it. Uh, now we'll replace where the untitled is. The next thing we're gonna give it is a description. You can give a description or you can leave it blank either way, whatever you're most comfortable with, but it will appear right underneath the untitled area. This is also where um, you can kind of give instructions for your form if you need to, or you can put in a PowerSchool data tag, such as the school name, different things like that, uh, the school year, anything. The success message, well, that is obviously what it says. So when the, when the uh, responder hits submit, they're going to see a success message if you want them to saying, ta-da, you've completed the form. You can have a variety of different things showing there. You don't have to have a success message by all means, but it is an option if you would like. Category is another, um, it's pretty important. It's used for sorting, um, especially if you have multiple forms in that area, you can see the different, um, your different categories. So for instance, I have, um, four categories that I use quite frequently. So I've got my new student registration, returning enrollment, um, athletic forms, high school counselor forms, 
that's just an idea. Um, a lot of times when they come in from power school, you know, you'll see them under e-collect, enrollment, et cetera. So it's important to always set that category. You can always change the categories afterwards um, if you, you know, made a mistake or you decide you want it somewhere else. The status is um, unpublished is what you want to leave it until you are ready to go live with it. Uh, so published would then be what you would mark if when you are ready to go live. It is um, scheduled. I haven't really used scheduled area much. It's published and unpublished is usually, you know, the top choices that I have. <clears throat> Excuse me, my throat is getting dry. These allergies are crazy right now. Uh, the next options. So you have some different options there, and I'll touch base on a couple of them a little bit later as well. But you have approval and notification. Those are probably um, used most often. Uh, you Anonymous responses, obviously, is like when you're using a survey. Restricting to submit once. If you are doing like a survey, you can use it on um, collaborative forms as well if uh, you only want them to be able to submit one time. Disable submitting for family. You would use this if you have um, student personal information or personal information on the screen. Uh, so you would wanna use disable submit for family. If it's just a generic form, um, your contacts, doctors, if they use the same doctors or whatever, that could be something that you could potentially um, use submit for family for. Clear form on submission. Uh, so whenever they submit it, obviously it clears out their information afterwards. Hide the save button. I haven't ever really used that, um, but obviously I'm assuming it clears the form after you hit hide the save button. Or excuse me, it not after you hit the save button, it hides the save button so you, they can't submit it or save that. Share permissions is also another important area. This is going to open up a pop-up. And this is where you're going to identify who has access and what type of access they have. So you can, your admin, your parents, your students, your teachers, you're going to decide if you give them no access, view only access, or full access. And you can select which buildings. So if you have multiple buildings, in our case, we have four buildings. So I would decide if I um, one of those forms available to all four buildings or just a building or two. And I'll kind of touch base on that a little bit more as well. Resetting the form is there again, it's basically what it says. It's gonna reset your form if you want it to, um, or you can leave it as never. You've got a couple options. <clears throat> Custom styling, that's another thing I haven't used a great deal of yet, um, but I've read up a little bit more on it and it's something that I'm kind of looking forward to playing with some more. So I'm excited about that one. Um, you can just kind of decorate things up a little bit and get them to affect how they look. Owned by, obviously, as it says, it's the owner of the form. So whether you are the owner or you can pass ownership off to someone else. But also remember with that, only the owner can change a form. So only the owner can make any edits to the form. So if it's something that you're going to need, that person's going to have to pass the ownership back to you for you to be able to edit those forms. So just keep that in mind on that area. Next form is... It's going to, if you have another form, so if you have multiple forms in a registration process, for example, um, it just gives you a smoother way to go from one screen to the next without having to go back and forth. So as they hit submit, it's gonna load the next form for the parent. 